empires inevitably fall, and when they do, history judges them for their legacies they leave behind. Noah Feldman The BRICS Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa Alliance is based off an idea by the financial expert Jim O'Neill of Goldman Sachs, the leading global investments bank, security, and investment company based in California. Yeah, that one. O'Neill believed that by 2050, the four BRIC economies will become the dominant in the global economy. Established in 2006, this powerhouse crew got an extra day dose of awesomeness when South Africa joined in 2010. Ready to shake things up and challenge the status quo by uniting the cream of the crop from emerging economies. Is it a time to bid farewell to the old like the US and Western Europe? Because a new wave of influence is about to crash the West only party. And let's dive right on in. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. It helps us more than you can possibly imagine. Make sure to also leave a comment down below because we would love to hear from you. If you have any more video ideas. Once the Fab Five, Bricks has suddenly ballooned into a posse of 11 at their highly publicized gathering in Johannesburg, South Africa. With their impressive GDP, known as Gross Domestic Product, a monetary tool used to measure economic health of a country, like goods and services. The US has the largest GDP in the world, Germany in Europe, Nigeria in Africa, China in Asia. BRICS partnership is for mutually accelerated growth, sustainable development, and inclusive military support. These countries share the same interests and face similar obstacles, making them the powerhouse group that the Avengers wish they were. We beginning more as a group of friends trying to dethrone the US dollar from its reign, Russia, Iran, and China are ready to open a can of whoop ass on the almighty greenback, aka the US dollar. Meanwhile, India is currently taking a breather from arming countries that are committing the big G. Saudi Arabia has decided not to renew their exclusive proto-dollar agreement with the US. Signed in 1975 to sell their oil exclusively using the dollar in exchange for security to guarantee, causing further dollarization. Brazil and South Africa are somewhere in between content to trade with the China currency, the Renabi, for now. It's like a high stake currency poker game where everyone has their own strategy. The BRICS thought process is why don't we skip the whole constantly owing other countries pre predominantly Western currency thing and focus on actually being self sufficient? It seems smarter to build up their own capabilities rather than constantly relying on expensive imports. Just thinking out loud. So why the whole different universal currency thing? Well, rich countries are basically playing the role of the world's money lenders, loaning sums of to poor countries with high interest rates, finance charges, and often unreasonable repayment dates. Anyone who has ever taken out a student loan or payday loan understands how sus this system is. It's basically like when you're playing Monopoly, now one guy is the banker and actually controls the game. The catch? They must use the rich world currencies, aka the dollar, to repay. This devalues your own country's currency while increasing the dollar. So while the West gets wealthier, you're pretty much staying stagnant if not decreasing. It's like Robin Hood in reverse. The rich getting richer and the poor just keeping their heads above water. Nothing like treading water, folks. Today, the US is the world's largest money lender. And one would think that Americans must be living their best life 
because the government is raking in the cash. But the ra rising interest rates, the greenback, is becoming too expensive for most countries. Many developing nations are missing out on their share of the pie, sacrificing 2-3% of their GDP. And since a country's currency value is based off their GDP, they will never grow economically. No fun having other people's stuff while you're begging for crumbs off their plate. Everyone wants nice things, like the new Gucci. The current model is about as effective as trying to sell sunscreen in Antarctica. It simply does not work. Countries constantly giving cash to pour into the US financial sector, aka corporations, is like handing keys over to let them go on a joyride with zero accountability. Meanwhile, the US current accounting deficit it's ballooning faster than a pufferfish on a feeding frenzy. Our f manufacturing sector is shrinking. We've got more money going out on imported goods than coming in and trying to plug a leaky hose with a handful of glitter. Pretty to look at, but not very effective. Developing nations have been saying how globalization has essentially turned, turned the world into a plush playground for western currencies enter bricks with their own currency to give the dollar a run for its money you can see what i did there it's basically as if the world was tired of being exploited and it's just now it's like oh the hard earned money it's going to the wealthy countries the real question is will the new bricks currency weaken the us dollar after all the us dollar is basically the cool kind of block that comes to currency exchanges. It's the crown's the world's reserve currency, backing the world's backed by the world's largest gold reserves thanks to Bretton Woods Agreement. Why is dollar so popular? It's like the Mr. Beast of currency. Everyone wants to be his friend. Quick history. Before entering World War II, the US was the Allies arms dealer. Most countries paid in gold. By the end of the war, the U.S. owned the majority of the world's gold reserve. What's the old saying? Who owns the gold makes the rules. Brick's currency proves to be proper challenger to U.S. dominance. If this new currency manages to keep a steady pace next to the dollar and actually challenge it, it could spell trouble for Uncle Sam's ability to throw in the sanctions like confetti. A weakened dollar would, could mean tough times for American wallets and potentially spark an epic economic roller coaster that nobody wants the first front world for, especially everyday Americans. Almost half of all Americans are losing sleep over the possibility of a financial Armageddon. I mean, we have, we have a lot of stuff to worry about here. Well, World War Three hanging over our heads, climate change wrecking havoc, big government gobbling up taxpayer dollars, and creating an unstable economy. Most Americans are aware of these impending dangers, but we're not living our best worry-free lives despite the mainstream media that keeps dumping into to the world wide web. At the end of the day, no one wants, no one can predict the future. Will the new Brex currency spark a wave of US dollar alternatives? Only time will tell for sure. The almighty dollar has already decreased from its value of 77% in 1919 to 58% in 2023. The looming threat of de-dollarization is real and Russian vessels in Cuba. The US dollar hegemony is in question due to geopolitical and geostrategic shifts, inc including the ongoing Russia-Ukraine crisis, hence the recently signed 10-year deal by President Biden to aid Ukraine. With over 40 countries applying to join BRICS, this new currency could be the final push needed to kickstart a movement away from relying so heavily on the beloved greenback. As the dollar is America's main export, Further increasing its value will cause an increased interest rates and inflation, the likes of which Americans have never experienced. If the American government's global dominance continues to be threatened, it's not like they're above sending the youth to war to maintain their king and land status. 
But hey, that has been me. This has been AJ. It's been lovely being your host tonight. And now I have to go. Remember, Jordan's out.